Hi, welcome to I Shoot Watches. What I'm gonna work on today is I bought this Swatch Skeleton Automatic ETA 2841-1. It was made in 2013. It's a YAS 108. That's the model number. I paid 69 francs, 70 francs, which is about 70 US dollars for it, plus this SUOW100. And I guess the person who sold these, they bought them both in 2013 because they are both uh, transparent watches that show the movements. And the SUOW100. 100 is, uh, it's also called white lacquered. It's obviously a quartz movement. And then the white AS108 is an automatic mechanical movement. So those were very inexpensive watches, but I really like this one. The things I don't like about it are I don't like this extra ornamentation on the chapter ring. You could call it a dial, but most of the dial is skeletonized. But I want to, I'm actually going to, what I'm going to try to do is remove the back on this. It just makes me nervous. To, <sighs> remove the, that part of the dial, these, ex, the extra ornamentation, the circles here. Remove that with a Dremel tool. And then clean up the edges. Paint the edges with a little bit of black touch-up paint. Because I've looked and it's painted uh, around the edge of the chapter ring. And then I'm going to try to loom the inside, just tiny loom dots on the inside of each of the hour markers so that it doesn't actually get on the top of the chapter ring. It's just a tiny dot on the inside so that the indices are luminous. Mm, too much on the top. Oh, I'm shaking. And then I'm going to change the hands to these hands I bought from Cousins. And they are already uh, super luminova. They're already luminescent. When Swatch makes the, the equipment to manufacture this stuff, they can decide what all the tolerances are in terms of pressure and fit and tightness. And the, the newer the watch is, the the more likely it is that it those tolerances are higher in terms of it's more and more difficult to open it because they don't want to have service problems and the problem with trying to pull it all up at once with this Bergeon lift is that well actually the Bergeon lift should work it should compress the whole idea behind it is that it compresses the whole thing equally so that it lifts out it shouldn't even be a matter of having to pull it, it should just be squeezing it It just makes me nervous. To, that's cool, though. <laughs> Scared the shit out of me. It lifted it so fast and hard that it made a snapping sound, but I think it's okay. So the next thing is to pull the movement out. So I need to remove the... stem and crown 
And with these ETA movements, you, you just press the button, but you got to be very careful because if you press it too hard, you damage. Just takes just the tiniest amount of pressure. Oh, there's an arrow there. No, there's not. Is that an arrow? Yeah. I think that arrow is saying... Is that just a scratch? There we go. The dial slash chapter ring is already loose, which is good. Try to line up everything up here so I can get it all at once. So with those in a stack, it should be a little bit less likely to damage the second hand. Okay. Now I'll put these hands back in the containers for the other one. There's my second hand. And then the dial is free. I think the dial only has this divot here for six o'clock. So that corresponds to that little bump there. So um, this is the, the two bits I'm going to use for the Dremel tool are a cutting bit and a grinding bit. And then I've got this scrap wood so I can hold this down while I, while I cut against the wood. So put the bit in there. So part one, success.
Okay, I think that's it. So I think the first thing I'll do to um, is just put the hands on it so I can put the movement out of the way. Tweezers over there. I'll use the microscope for this. Wow. I gave uh, my previous set of these to Paul, and uh, I haven't ever even used these. These are the exact same thing I gave to Paul. The problem is... This one looks good. So the idea behind this is that you can press that on without scratching the hand. It's difficult to know where 12 o'clock is. Maybe I do need them. Uh, where is it? Yeah, Chris, that, that jewel is at 12 o'clock.
I think that's it. <clears throat> Now the final bit <clears throat> this paintbrush is just way too much so I'm just going to put some on this popsicle stick Next is the loom. So this is my Tritec Super Luminova kit. These cost about a hundred bucks. Maybe sixty. But you can do like a lot of watches with one of these. I don't think I've ever made such a small amount of this, but if I'm quick, that's probably all I need. <clears throat> Yikes. I don't think I've done this under the microscope before. So I want to remember not to do six o'clock.
so hard. Uh, ah. mm, too much on the top. Oh, I'm shaking. Okay, it's already... Mm, too much. Interesting. I guess the key is just to kind of keep building them up until they're equal. Okay, I think that's pretty good. <laughs> um, that is cool. Just gotta let that dry. So I'm ready to put this back together again. And I just need to remove the stem Again, what I'm going to try to do is just use the least amount of pressure possible on this point. And then Now there's no way that dial is going to rotate with this into the right position, but we'll try anyway. Mm. 
Napier Theater. Whoa, what's that? That damage, how did that happen? Did I drop it on that? I guess I'll see in the video. I'm pretty sure that damage on the rotor was not, I'm sure it was not there before. That sucks. I'm pretty sure I laid the movement down on top of that. I'm sorry. Uh, that's not great. Unbelievable. Um, this is really difficult. Okay, so the only other thing I'm going to do just because... Gonna put a little bit of gasket grease on the. <laughs> on this gasket right here. It looked like a lot, but it wasn't. Okay, so this goes in. Now, the back, there were some scratches on that too, and there were some nicks from, actually chips from, this, from the, the claw of the Bergeon. And I'm going to have to use kind of press to put this back on, I'm sure. And I, it probably still won't go. But let's just see if we have the watch kind of working now. Seems good. I can't believe I scratched that paint on that rotor. Maybe I'll remove that eventually if it comes off that easily. Just take the rotor off and clean it. Chemically clean it because the I really don't like that black rotor anyway. Um, okay, so I need some kind of press. Where is that? This is probably where I'd destroy the whole thing now. So either the back is kind of tapered enough that it will, this designed to be pressed on, so it kind of tapers in, or, or it doesn't. And it could be that it has to be Compressed. I think it should press on, but this is not the greatest tool. Hmm. I think it did go. And there's dirt inside there too, dust.
Well, one thing, actually, the back did press on pretty easily, so. What, what is that? Just oil. This hair right here is what I'm worried about. Hmm. Okay, so anyway, it's cool. The only problems are all the all the scratches I made and chips and everything else. But I like it better than I did. And it ha it's it has loom on it now. Hey, so uh, I I went back and I, I took the movement out. I re-cleaned it. I cleaned the inside of the crystal top and bottom because uh, you can't... Like I started looking around and I had wiped the inside of the crystal with a paper towel that's supposed to be fiberless, but um, there was all kinds of fibers in there. So um, I went back and completely cleaned out the inside of the front and the back, took the movement out. I also took the rotor off because I wanted to see how hard it would be to, I was going to just strip it right there. But the, um, the problem is the bearing part of it is press fit and I'm not ready to take that apart. So if I do clean the paint off, I have to be really careful about not getting into the bearing, not getting the cleaning chemical into the bearing. And that's not going to be easy. I'm water testing this, this watch. This is the swatch that I um, changed the dial on and the hands, and it, it's got a transparent case back. And when I was what, popping this out, the case back, uh, the the back crystal got some chips in it, and um, I'm hoping it's still waterproof. But the only way to know is to test it. So as long as it's fine, I'm not going to publish this video. But I thought since my channel is about failing. Oh, I wanted to flip that around. Since my channel is about what happens when things go wrong. Not about, but since I deal with that, since things do go wrong occasionally. Um, I'm going to test it, and then if it leaks, I'm going to have to deal with the emergency, and it's going to not be great. Mm. Mm hmm. Is that just... I see like, um, I think it's fine, but I see a kind of, this is where the crystal's cracked. Uh, it's hard to focus it there. But that's where water would enter if it's going to enter. So this watch, I didn't, um, I didn't touch the front crystal, so I'm sure that that's fine. If it fails, you would see it steam up inside, and it's not steaming up. I think that's all good. 
Whew. Thank goodness. Just finishing this Three, twenty-one. 